trip Tell me where you wanna go Making it flip Baby, see me counting dough Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rise of a Star Yes, sir Today, we have the man, the myth Mr. The Original Camisa Negra R.I.P. Jack Let's yes, go to G R.I.P. in the building, you know the vibe, man We're out here, just good vibes only, man Good vibes only yes, sir. Speaking of good vibes it's a few days before Christmas, so I hope you guys are spending time with your family, staying safe, you know. It's a crazy season we're going in, bro. Crazy time we're living in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right about that. Yeah, Feliz Navidad to all you guys, to your mom, dad, uncle, aunt, dog, fish. Happy Hanukkah. Happy everything, man. Yeah, happy, happy holidays. Yeah, screw it, man. Why not? All right. Without any further ado, he's going to jump right into it. So... What made you want to become a rapper? So what made me want to become a rapper? Honestly, I think like, it's kind of like the music found me. Like I didn't wake up one day and I was just like, yo, like I want to make music. Like it started off with me just like writing lyrics. I wasn't really like writing a song. Like I, you know, I went through a heartbreak and that's kind of what made me get into the music. Yeah, I feel you. So what, what I'm getting from this is that you've been way too heartbroken and your demons have now rose in. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? That's really what happened, man. It's my fate now. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel that though. Negra. You feel me? Always. Free and negra, thank you. A lot of my life, yo. And I feel that though because I went through kind of like the similar thing because you have to like, I don't know if you heard the same, like you got to go through the darkness to see the sunshine at the end. Of course. Definitely. I've heard that before, 100%. And I agree with it, you know, like, it's like a roller coaster. Sometimes you got to go down if we can go up, you know? Yeah, no cap. And also, how long have you been a rapper for? So I've been rapping since my freshman year of college. That was back in 2016. So like four years now. Mm. And what, what college did you go to? And like, what were you studying at that point in time? Um, I went to Bergen Community College. I only did like two semesters there. And then after that, I was like, nah, man, like I gotta go all out on the music. I started getting a little traction at the time and I was like, all right, like this is where I'm heading, you know? Mm. And what, what first made you go to college and why did you end up dropping out? So what made me first go to college definitely, you know, was my parents, you know, coming from immigrant parents, all they know is, you know, school equals success. But, you know, times are different nowadays. And, you know, I, I don't blame them for having that mentality, you know, because they grew up the way they did. But, you know, here we just have a whole bunch of more opportunities. And, you know, the possibilities are endless in America. And that's the truth. Yeah, exactly. Like in our generation, like you don't really have to have an education, even though it's like suggested to like have one to get like a regular job. Like there are people who never went to college. Hell, Eminem didn't even graduate high school, and look at where he's at. Yeah, exactly. And like, all I'm gonna tell you is, bro, like, you name me one time when you used the Pythagorean theorem outside of school, like, never, you know? Like, I mean, like, just imagine like someone's like about to rob you, like, yo, bro, I won't, I won't take your money <laughs> if you told me the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> yeah, like, yo, oh man, but hey, you know, it is what it is. To each its own, you know. If school is your thing, school is your thing, you know. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Well. Going into that, this leads me to my next question. What would you do if you're walking down the street, you're just chilling, you're vibing, and then uh -huh. little Timmy here, he walks up to you and he's like, oh my God, you're RIP Jack. Oh man, I always wanted to meet you, man. I just dropped out of high school because I want to be a SoundCloud rapper, man. Like, how would you feel if you just heard little Timmy say that? Would you feel impressed? Would you be like, eh, like, like what would you tell him? So first of all, I'm going to be blessed. I'm like, damn, yo, this kid recognized me. That's crazy. But second of all, I'm going to go tell him, yo, Timmy, First things first, you need to go back and finish high school at least, at least high school, you know? Like, don't drop out of high school. Drop out of college, you know? <laughs> like, if you really want to drop out, at least get your high school diploma because without that, you literally can't even work at, like, a McDonald's or a Burger King, you know? That's crazy. So you recommend to these, like, kids, like, even though you're, like, blessed, you're, like, that's great, but, like, you want them to have, like, a second plan in case, like, this yeah, round. Yeah, of course, because, like, I think... At the end of the day, when it comes to the music, like you're chasing something that you're not 100% guaranteed you're going to get, you know, 
So you have to have a plan A, B, C, and D, just in case A and B don't work out. You know, you got C and D to rely on. Um, like, because when it comes to like, you know, if we're talking about this little kid, Timmy, there's a lot of struggles and a lot of shit you got to go through as an artist for you to grow. And, you know, this life isn't cut for everybody. Not everyone can take these hardships and learn from it. A lot of people, it will break them, you know? So it's just like survival of the fittest at that point when it comes to music. Yeah, exactly. I respect that. That makes sense. That actually leads me into my next question. So you said you went through these hardships as a kid. Like, mm-hmm. what was your childhood like when you were growing up? Like, when you were, like, in, like, just growing up in, in your neighborhood, or, like, when you were in high school, middle school, like, were you always the popular kid? Were you the, just the kid in the corner, like, the wallflower, just, like, or, like, what were you? Yeah, so, like, if I'm being completely honest, like, I wasn't neither, like, a popular kid or, like, like, uh, like, you, like you said, a kid in the corner. Like, I had my group of friends, my little circle, but it was a very tight circle. And, you know, growing up with poverty and all that, we lived in a two-bedroom apartment with, like, seven people in it. It was crazy. But I don't know. Like, it's just I feel like I'm, I'm thankful for all that that happened because – it made me and it helped shape the man I am today, you know? It helped a lot of times with the experiences that I do rap about, stuff like that, you know? Because I'm, I'm not from the hood and I don't ever claim to be from a hood, but we all go through our own struggles. We all go through our own, you know, like downfalls and stuff. And and now I just want to paint my picture the way I want to paint, you know? So where are you from then? Like, where are you from? Like, which part of Jersey are you from? So I'm from uh, Fairview, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Like, were you born and raised there or like? No, no, no. So my parents are Salvadorian. You know, I'm born in America, but, you know, I, I'm my bloodline is Salvadorian. So, you know, that's what I rep. I'm Salvadorian 100%. I respect that. I respect that. Did you grow up in like Fairfield or like, or Fairview or like, where did you grow yeah, up? Yeah, like, honestly, yeah, I did. Like, Fairview is my hometown and my hometown forever. You know, I'm always going to show love to the, to the view. And you still there now? Uh, nah, right now I moved, but, mm. but yeah. Moved out, got your own crib, huh? Something like that. Mm. All right, I respect I can dig it, I can dig it. So how did your parents feel when you said, I mean, don't get me wrong, school is cool and everything, but mm-hmm. I want to be a rapper. Like, how did they react? How does your family react? So that, that that's a funny story. Like, just because, so, you know, I, like I said before, I didn't, I didn't always think music was going to be for me. Like, the music kind of found me after the heartbreak, whatever. But like once I started gaining traction and, you know, the followers started coming in, people reaching out like, yo, the song's really good, this and that. Then at one point I sat my parents down and I'm like, look, I know you guys really want me to go to school and all that, but like, this is my passion. Like this is literally what I wake up. And the first thing I think about is like a new melody, a new this, like a new song. Like when, how am I going to get my new cover art, this and that. And I'm like, the music found me, you know? And that's why I feel like it's like, God knows what he does things for and why he puts certain things in your life. And I feel like this is my purpose, you know? And they, my parents are very supportive. You know, I do appreciate them. Do they agree with my decision? Probably not, but they are very supportive, 100%. I'm glad you were able to find like your purpose in life because that's what I tell like my younger nephews. I tell that to my younger siblings, like, listen, you have to figure out what you want to do with your life sooner rather than later, because uh-huh. this is something you're going to be possibly doing for the rest of your life. And exactly. if you don't like what you're doing, if you're not chasing after a dream, you're wasting your breath. You're wasting your stamina. Like, bro, like you're, you're chasing after some bullshit. Like exactly. And like, most importantly, bro, like you're draining your own soul because like you're putting up with it every single day. Like, yo, I hate it here. I don't want to do this. And it's just bad for your own mental, you know? Like for me, like for example, like I work a nine to five and like, this is something I don't want to do the rest of my life. This is just something I'm doing just to get a check. Exactly. But I have like dreams and aspirations that I want to go after, which keeps me alive every day. Like I yeah, wake exactly. up thinking like, oh, I can't wait to get off of work so I can do this, that, and the third. Like, you feel the me? Way, the way it gotta be, man, you gotta have that mentality, you know? You can't have that nine to five mentality. You have to break out of that. Yeah, exactly. I feel like everyone is worth more than a nine to five. You should not put yourself 
you should not like help someone else be successful when you, you should be helping yourself be successful. That's a fact. like what you did for yourself, just what everyone else should be continuing to do. Like, you feel me? Like, hell yeah, man. Like, honestly, I agree with you with that. There's a star within all of us. We just need to dig deep and find that, you know, cause we're all, we're all special. None of us are the same. So like, if like, that's why I don't really like it when people go and like idolize, um, but let's, let's say a celebrity because at the end of the day, they're people just like you and me, you know, they, they feel happy, sad, depressed, all that. So if they could do it, what makes you think you can't, you know, like reach their levels of success and all that stuff. Like it's, it's, you can do it yourself. You really can. Exactly. Man. Speaking of idolizing people, who did you look up to when you want to start this rap thing? Like, did you have anyone who inspired you? Anyone you listened to as a kid? Anyone like, yeah, so like, all right, so as far as like my idols, when it comes or to- Or not even just rap, just like people in general, like, you know? Yeah, yeah, like when it comes to the music, 100%, like I grew up listening to Linkin Park. So like, I love like the whole mix between rock and then, you know, they had four minor rapping. So I always thought that was cool and I always wanted to implement that into my songs, you know? But, uh, but honestly, like it's not even like a big time rapper that really got me into rapping. It was one of my boys called, his name is Emperor Swank. And seeing the way that he rapped and it's just like, it inspired me. Cause I'm like, yo, I want to be as good as this guy. Cause this guy got bars, bro. I'm like, and you know, at the time I was still learning. I was still growing, developing as an artist. And you know, it took for me to make a couple songs for him. And honestly, I, I grew from that. And I definitely learned a lot from him. You just mentioned that you, you're constantly developing as an artist, which leads yeah. me to uh, my next question. So it's kind of a two-parter. Number one, what title do you see yourself as? Do you see yourself as a rapper or an artist? Because from what I understand and what I'm constantly like learning about is that it's two different things. And number two, how do you feel you've evolved as whatever title you feel you are in the past four to five years you've been rapping? Yeah, so like... So first, to answer the first question, there is a difference between a rapper and an artist. Because I feel like, you know, a rapper is just someone who literally just comes on the mic and spits, you know? He's rapping about his his struggles, all that stuff. But an artist is probably more like commercial, you know? He's making music for the masses, not for like a uh, specific demographic. Um, and where I consider myself is definitely an artist because I'm not limited to just one genre. I feel like I'm capable of you know, doing multiple sounds, different genres, of course. And I've definitely developed so much from when I first started. And a lot of it is confidence. It's not even about me developing as an artist, it's me getting more confident in myself. So the more confident I get, the better I sound, if that makes sense. That's like a common trend that I've seen a lot of, a lot of rappers. Even the rappers that I've interviewed in the past, the main thing that they always say is like i felt more comfortable hearing my voice or i felt more comfortable using this like yeah 100%. not even like they improved on themselves because they were already good off the rip they just like and even when like just regular people in general like they don't like hearing themselves at first but then yeah. once you get more confident you're like you start thinking you start going from like man i hate hearing how that sounds you start thinking like oh man i can't wait till this drops like you know yeah me? man it, it literally is like that because at the beginning like and there's like studies show like you you get nervous once you know that you're being recorded whether it be like film audio like it's just like um like like a trait we all have but once you learn to break out of that and because when it comes to music man it's all from melody that comes from deep within you know so if you're feeling a little anxious, a little nervous behind the mic, you're gonna hear it, you know? Maybe you yourself might not hear it, but someone else will. So it's all about just being comfortable in your own skin and honestly believing in what you're singing, if that makes sense too. Mm. And honestly, when it comes to the singing thing, that's what I thought the difference between being a rapper and an artist was. I thought that like an artist, they have like more of a melody and like more of a tone in their voice while rappers just like, I be hitting up the licks. I be shooting up the sticks, like stuff like yeah, that's I mean, like in 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 certain ways. Yeah, that is true. But at the end of the day, like there are rappers that are rappers, but it's like a singing rap, like like a like a Roddy Rich. I feel like he's 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 a, he's like a he's a melodic rapper, you know. So how would you describe someone like Drake? What is he to you? Is he a rapper? He's an artist. Or is he an artist? He's an artist. Cause Drake makes different music. He makes different genres. You know, he can. Mm. He can 
he could sing on a lovey dovey song or he could go on a hard like 808 hit and beat dropping some crazy bars you know mm. so how did the rap thing start did you like grab your laptop and then grab some like uh some microphone that you found put the sock on and just start going off in that beast man or like what did you do no truthfully man so i used to, there was this app right it's gone this is a funny ass story it's called i sing i don't know if you ever heard of it and it sounds familiar it's like a karaoke app oh and, my, yeah it's okay yeah, yeah i know what you're talking yeah, about. it's a karaoke app and you know you can search up you know like the top songs whatever you can sing karaoke to it but what i did like starting off I would freestyle to those beats and, you know, I'll listen to my own voice. You, there's like little effects you could do. And after like, I think, I forgot what beat it was. I think it was a beat to um, Nonstop by Drake. That I did a freestyle to it. I showed all my friends and they're like, yo, like, it sounds pretty good. You know, like, I know it's just on your phone, but like, it doesn't sound bad, bro. Like, I think you should actually try it. So one day I reach out to one of my boys that he had like an in-home studio session thing. Um, but it was nothing official, you know, it was literally we were recording in a closet, you know, but I, you know, I started off from that and just hearing my voice for the first time on the actual mic, not my phone. I was like, yo, my voice sounds pretty cool, you know, like, and I grew up hating my voice. So then now when I actually heard it for the first time on a mic, I was like, yo, this is pretty cool. You know, like I could switch up my voice and it still sounds good. I'm like, okay, I bet. I think I found something, you know? Mm. So another thing that the audience man I know is that my boy Jack, as you can see right here, it's actually so does have a song with Skinny from Nine that came out like I believe like what well, like a year or two ago. Yeah, about, about a year now. I think it came out last September. So if you don't mind me asking, this is gonna be like a two to three part question. So All right. how did the skinny feature ended up happening? Mm -hmm. How did it feel to work with him? And how would you describe him like during the interaction? Like, how would you describe like what, what went down? So the way I got the feature was through my manager, Adam, you know, shout out my boy, Adam, you know, I, and real quick, shout out uh, Misery Loves Company. Shout out to the bro, Adam, Adam, bro. You feel me? But, you know, Adam was cool with, uh, with Josh, which, you know, was Skinny's manager at the time, I think. And, you know, send him one of my tracks and next thing I know, Skinny fucks with, with, with something he heard and, you know, we made it happen. And being, like, how I felt working with him, like, it, it was kind of surreal at first because at the time, you know, I didn't really have no no big following. But, you know, just the fact that alone that he, he fucked me for the music, like, it, it, it was pretty cool. And he, honestly, he's a pretty dope guy. I know the media, like, likes to portray a different, like, I don't know, like a different side of him, but he, he's mad dope mad genuine, mad like down to earth and all that. And I, I just think, you know, it's it's different when cameras are on, but when cameras are off, he's a very cool dude, bro. Very cool. So would you say that Skinny from the Nine kind of propelled your career or like he just kind of gave you like a little jumpstart boost? So definitely, you know, it, it did help me out a lot. Um, but I would say it helped me out more like me personally, because then I realized I'm like, yo, like, I'm capable of making a song with, you know, someone in the industry and the song sounding good. Like, it's not like he straight outshined me on the song, you know, no pun intended, the song's called Shine, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, it just felt good to me because I'm like, yo, like, I love my parts to a song with an artist that, you know, that I kind of bump to, you know. And the crazy thing is, like, that's how I ended up meeting you because, like, I saw you had a feature with Skinny, I'm like, yo, wait, what? And like, at first, like no offense with like other rappers I've heard, like I just only listen to the skinny feature and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know what, screw it. Let me give this kid a chance. And like all here is like, I'm taking a bitch, you look a dime. You thought she was yours, but she's mine. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you like hitting the thing. And like, I started listening to your other stuff. I'm like, yo, freeze frame goes hard. Black shirt goes hard. Make sure to stream that shit right now, bro. Yes, sir, yo, bro. Right after the interview. Out, out sure all platforms, all platforms, bro. About that? Except SoundCloud, except SoundCloud. Except SoundCloud, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apple Music, Spotify, LimeWire. FrostWire. <laughs> <laughs> yo, leave a comment if you guys remember LimeWire. Yeah, yo, I definitely started off LimeWire, man. Like, 
And that's where I got all my music and it gave me mad viruses, but fuck it. I had free music. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got, man. That shit gave me viruses, bro. I had to download Drake's album. Yeah, I know. I think that's when, like, best I ever had was, like, popping and shit, you know? Like, yeah, man. So, would you say that the skinny feature is your favorite song that you've created? Or would you say something like Black Shirt or Free Stream is, like, your favorite song? Or, like, what would you think is your best? So, my personal favorite song hasn't dropped yet. Um, but to Ooh. answer your question, do I think my song with Skinny is my favorite song? No. Okay. Why do you say that? Do you have better stuff coming out or? Like a thousand percent, I got better stuff than that. And it's just like, I've grown from that song too, you know? So like, I feel like I, my sound has just gotten even better than that. So definitely like my favorite song, if I had to say it right now, is Dark Knight. It hasn't released yet. It's definitely my next release, but I'm just waiting on that. It's definitely my favorite song right now. Mm. Leaving me on suspense, man. I can't. Really <laughs> and a real that. quick, a quick shout out to my boy Trip. You know, he's my engineer. And he's also on a song Dark Knight, and I'm just gonna tell you, like we, we come, we come in different. Like, the beat itself, like it's just crazy. It's crazy. Okay, well, uh, getting off of that, the next thing I'm gonna ask you is, um, what helps you create these songs, like on a day-to-day -day basis, like? Do you like during your day you just be humming a beat and you think, oh man, this beat will go hard with some lyrics, or you just be like saying some random lyrics, thinking like, I just got some top, I just hit her with the pop, I just hit her with the lot, and then you be think, yo man, if I had a beat, this would go ten times crazy, like. Yeah, so I mean, I I definitely, because there are a lot of people that write their lyrics before you know listen to a beat, but the way I go is I go based off the vibe that the beat gives me. But like to answer your question. I do wake up every single day, like coming up with my own melodies and stuff. And then I kind of interpret that into like the beats that I listen to, you know? Mm. So like, you know, I'll, let's say today I hum like a little melody and it gets stuck in my head. I'll, I'll, you know, go on my email, pick a beat. And then I'll use that same melody on the beat and I'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, I use it another beat and then, you know, so on and so forth. Mm. I like that. I respect that. Well. Wow. I'm also gonna ask, how did you and Adam meet? Because from what I from what I know, Adam was your manager. He was helping you out. How did you guys meet, and uh, how described you guys' relationship? So me and Adam, yo, me and Adam go way back. So I met Adam. I want to say either third or fourth grade, and like I met him at uh, this local park that we saw play at. Like we used to play basketball and stuff. And I'm pretty sure when we first met, like, we low-key were kind of not not beefing, but, like, you know, we were just playing basketball. You know how things get heated, you know? Mm -hmm. And Real hooping shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I was on my hooping shit. And Adam always was dumb nice at threes. Like, his shot was just wet. And I hated it because I'm like, yo, why is, like, why is this little skinny kid so wet? Like, what, like, pause. But, you know, like, and it was crazy. But I, off, like, you know, right after that, we just instantly became friends and then you know i've he's been my right hand my best friend ever since so let me get this straight so y'all became friends and he became your manager yeah so you couldn't guard him up <laughs> basically no nah, no nah. i mean it's you know a lot like so the way he became my manager is like he was managing my other boy emperor swank that i was telling you about earlier yes. he, um he was managing him for a little bit and, you know, he would bring me along to the studio sessions, this and that. And I would sit back and pay attention to what Swank was doing, you know, pay attention to his work ethic. Um, and just like, I'm like, yo, I hope one day I can, you know, put out a song that would make Adam want to manage me, you know, because he was my best friend. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to go up to him like, yo, manage me, bro, you know. Mm. And one day I forgot what song I dropped or what song I showed him. And he goes, yo, bro, like. You got a lot of potential, my G. Like, I, I really think it's time that, you know, we start taking this shit serious. And, you know, we, we were at Five Guys. I remember this. We were eating we were eating a burger. And he was just like, yo, like, I, I really want to manage you, bro. I think me and you could do big things, you know? And then ever since then, we've just been on, on go mode. That was about, like, three years ago. That's valid. That's valid. Like, you guys have, like, a strong relationship. 
Even though the way you guys met was literally like the funniest way I've ever heard <laughs> someone meet someone. That's so good that you guys have like this proud relationship. I love that. Yeah. I respect that, man. And we, we did track and everything together. We won a league title together. Like, man, we go, we go way back, bro. We go way back. Mm. That's valid. And another thing I want to ask you is like, from what I saw a few weeks back, Fetty Wap caught, you caught the attention of Fetty Wap. Mm -hmm. So first off, how did that feel getting inter getting the interaction from Freddie Wap? Like getting like people yeah, yeah. like seeing his shit from you. And did you have any interaction with Freddie Wap? Like anything? Yeah. So so long story short, my my manager Adam, he 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 kind of knows Freddie, and you know, so we got to connect through that. And like definitely once he you know because he shouted me on his story a few times, and it was just like very surreal because. I grew up all of high school bumping this shit, you know, Trap Queen, My Way, 679, all that shit. And then for like Jersey Zone to recognize me, I'm like, yo, it was, it was definitely surreal. And it was definitely like a milestone in my career for me. Yeah, same, man. When I was growing up, like, Freddie Wap was like the biggest thing, like, like My Way, like, my niggas get their money just to spend it. When you know you can, I take it with you. Like, literally, like, that went hard. Then after that, Skinny came out. Like, we haven't had any, like, big people from Jersey other yeah. than Fetty and Skinny. So that leads me to my next question. Do you feel like you're going to be, like, the next big thing? Like, obviously, yeah, you have to have that confidence. But, like, how do you oh, feel like you are? Like, how is this going? 100%, man. Just because I have so much to offer. Like, I have, like I said, I'm so versatile. And I feel like I'm going to come in the game. Like, all I need is that foot in the door. And once I get my foot in the door, then it's just completely, I'm going to take off, man. Because, like, I have this whole, kind of have, like, a whole game plan of how I'm going to make this shit work. And, you know, I'm just following it step by step. And going back earlier from what I said about Freddie Wap, do you two have, like, anything in the works, anything coming out, or, like, you can't disclose that information? So, as of right now, I might have to plead a fifth on that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, keep it on the low. Keep it chill. Keep it chill. All right, got gotcha. you. the DL, you know, the feds be listening, bro. Yeah, bro, man. Fuck so, <laughs> man. My job told me to come in and work today. I told them, they told me 12 to 7. I said, nah, bro. I either come in at 11 or 1 p.m. Can't fuck with 12. Yeah, yo, honestly, yo, I'm about to use that in my next job. Actually, nah, I'm not about to work no more. Fuck that. <laughs> like, bro, and the crazy thing is, like, I literally said that to my boss. He was like, okay, fine, you want to come in at 11? You're like, yeah. Uh, we got to come in at 1. All right, fine, come in at 1. All right, cool. <laughs> just came in, just because fucked up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, who are three people you'd want to work with in the future? In the future, so 100%. Travis Scott, Lil Wayne, Post Malone. Those are my top three I want to work with. You feeling sick on more? Nah, nah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> and what makes you want to work with those three? So Travis Scott was just, he's like my, my music inspiration for almost everything. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I tuned into him back when he dropped Al Farrell. And since then, like, I've just been a huge fan of his and his whole style, his whole, like, persona. Like, just, like, it's just so dope, man. And I definitely take a lot of inspiration from him. Mm. I respect that. I respect that. And um, ooh, before I forget, mm -hmm. where did the name R.I.P. Jack even come from? Uh, yo, you just, I've been dying to answer this question. So I'm technically named after an uncle who passed away a few years before I was born. And his name is the same exact name as mine, Joaquin Carpio. The only difference is I have a middle name, Alexander. So I'm Joaquin Alexander Carpio, and he's just Joaquin Carpio. So first things first, that's where Jack comes from, Joaquin Alexander Carpio, because you know, it's my real name initials. And how RIP Joaquin came from is one, paying tribute to my uncle, and two, I grew up a very, like, anti-social kid you know like of course i had my friends and stuff but i wasn't going out i wasn't interacting with other, with like you know all the other kids and stuff and as i got older you know i kind of broke out of that mentality i came out my shell and i'm just like you know what like r.i.p to the old me r.i.p my old ways my old habits my insecurities like r.i.p to who i used to be now 
I'm a whole new person, you know? Mm. I respect that. I love that mentality. And I love how you actually put some thought into your name. Like, we have too many Lil's, too many yeah, this, man. too many that. Like, no one puts thought into their name. You're, like, one of the few people who I know put, like, actual thought and process into their name. Uh, 100%. Because I, I, I knew from day one, I'm like, if this is the path I want to take, I'm doing it as authentic and as genuine as possible, you know? So another thing I was going to ask you is um, when you're not rapping, when you're not creating your songs, what do you do in your off time? Uh, I play a lot of Call of Duty, bro. That's all I do. Call of Duty all day, every day, man. Bang, bang. <laughs> well, same, man. I'm trying to play I'm trying to play Call of Duty Cold War when that bitch drops on the PS5. If they let me fucking buy one, like, come on, man. man. Bro, I'm on the same boat. I took like three or four back-to-back L's on the PS5. And I'm not going to buy Cold War for the PS4 because why would I do that, you know? Bro, I literally took an L today. Like, bro, like I said, I had just did my shift like mm-hmm. at uh, like 5 o'clock to like 11.30 last night. And I didn't even mm-hmm. sleep. Like the minute I got home from 11.30, mm-hmm. I, uh, I went to this game. I went to this, not this game, so this Best Buy. It opened at like five, six in the morning. I drove all the way over there, like right after, like 3 a.m. Slept there, 5 a.m. Got in, like an hour later. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. We're all out of the PS5. We're all sold out. Mm-hmm. Checking the website soon, like we're all. Mm-hmm. And I have to drive yeah. home, sad as shit. Because like three <laughs> hours later, I have to go to work. Like, <laughs> I was thinking I'm gonna drive home, I'm gonna drive home, drop it off, go to work and be like, hey guys, I got the PS5, guys. You guys are losers. Like, <laughs> damn. But nah, nah. Now you're just driving, bumping some Drake. Like, damn, man. No PS5, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. You can do better. Facts, man. And, you know, that reminds me. This one time, um, like, back in the day, I used to be big on the sneakers, you know? And, like, all my boys, you know, want to go camp out for the Concord 11s. I forget what year this is. I think 2011 or 2012. And long story short, they had to camp out in the rain outside the mall. And, like, so many of them didn't even get the shoes. I'm like, damn, bro. Imagine camping out all night in the cold, in the rain. Just, like, for 12 hours later, you get told, bro, the shoes are sold out. No more, bro. I'm like, damn. Bro, the same thing happened to me back in 20, I think it was 13, 14, when the, it was, like, the Indigo 12s when those came out. Yeah. I was outside of, uh, you remember Garden State? Yeah, yeah. I was outside of Garden State. The thing, like, I was there like, a couple hours before they opened. And then mm-hmm. by the time that shit opened up, I went in. They said, listen, guys, all we have is size 8, 10, and 13. And I'm an 8 and a half. I have, like, big-ass feet. And I, I was like, oh, my God, man. Am I really going to have to, am I really going to buy this even though it's small? Nah, fuck it, man. Let's do it. Let's buy it. Where's the 190 bucks I spent in my life? Those shits were so uncomfortable, but I rocked them for like. Bro, at that point, you should have just flipped them. Or you should have, like, uh, you should have. That's the thing I did. Ended up flipping it. Like, two to three days later, I didn't even even get them dirty. Like, bro, I had the fucking, uh, I put the bags on my feet, you know, the fuck, like the, um, the grocery bags. I put that shit on my feet at all times. (laughs) I had, like, the see through ones. Like, you know, the ones that you get for, like, the vegetables? Yeah, yeah, it's like a, had, like a saran wrap type thing. Exactly, I had those, so like you could still see it, but I wasn't trying to get them dirty. I ended yeah, up yeah. flipping it for like two thirty, two forty. Word, word. Because that was literally like a day or two after they dropped. So I got lucky. Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, at least you got some money out of it, you know. Yeah, exactly. And that just and that went towards getting like the PS three at that time. Word, word. But um, like, what else do you be doing? You playing Call of Duty? Anything else you be doing? Like, do you go to work? Do you like? sleep do you watch anything like as of right now man like it's just i'm just 100 invested in the music so that's all i besides you know if i'm not working on something then i'm playing my you know my ps4 call of duty fifa so you know if anyone wants to play and wants to get smacked in fifa you know you could come out and hit my line but um besides that i'll be playing ball here and there with my boys too so would you call yourself a full-time rapper a full-time artist, yeah. A full-time artist. All right, I keep forgetting. Yes, sir. Full-time artist. All right, I like that. I respect that. And going into the future, would you want to just keep staying independent or would you want to see yourself get signed by a label? 
hundred percent I'm staying independent, man. I always told myself that from day one, and the only way I'm signing a deal is if it's a publishing deal. I'm you know, I wanna I wanna keep all you know, all my masters, all everything. Like I just wanna stay as independent as I can. And if I do sign, it's definitely a co-signer. You know, I'm not I'm not like no label is gonna have me hundred percent. So even you. if Atlantic or Interscope puts you on with a deal. Nah, man. Okay. I'm telling you, independent, it's, it's a longer road. You know, it's definitely a more treacherous road, but it's, more, it's so much more worth it at the end, 100%. I respect that. And there's a few independent artists who are still, like, going crazy in the game. Like, you got Enelie Chapa doing his own thing. Like, Enelie yeah. Chapa reminds me of LeBron when he first started off because these both these two guys – we're getting offers from everyone. Annalie Chapel was getting all these, like, Interscope Atlantic, all these offers, and LeBron was getting offers from, like, Adidas, Nike, like, all these offers. But, no, it was, like, Nike, Adidas, and, like, someone else. Like, they were offering them, like, these big contracts, like, 16, 17 years old. And LeBron yeah. chose to sign with Nike, and Annalie decided to stay independent. And it's, like, look at how they turned out. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah man. I'm going to say, like, especially nowadays with – Social media and everything, man. Like, independent is just the way to go. Exactly. You keep all of your profit. You don't have to give them, like, a certain, like, 10 15%. You just take everything exactly. as you please. Like, it's like, you know, 5 10 15 isn't a lot at first. But then once, you know, the numbers start coming in, you start seeing, like, yo, bro, they taking, like, 400 grand from me, you know? Then, then that 10% becomes a big deal, you know? Exactly, man. Like, if you could, you just let them not, not take any of your money. You got to keep all your guap, man. Like, come on, man. Yeah, man. I'm the one making the music at the end of the day, not them. So why, I got, why do I got to pay them, you know? Yeah, no cap, no cap. And before we wrap this up, this is the ultimate question. Do you have right, any you. plans to end off 2020, or are you just going to keep everything under wraps until 2021 starts up? So... All I'm gonna say is, if anyone follows me on SoundCloud, you're gonna get a drop before the end of the year. So if definitely, you know, I'm telling you guys, you guys should follow me on SoundCloud. I think you got the page up right here. Sure. But uh, I'm dropping, I'm dropping a SoundCloud exclusive before the year's up, and I'm starting 2021 with Dark Knight. So definitely, Whoa. you know, stay tuned. You heard it here, folks. We got some heat coming out before. Before the new year starts, and we got some heat going into 2021, man. It's going to be exciting. But the one before, you know, the one for the end of this year is a SoundCloud exclusive. So, you know, if you want to follow me there, then you and I are going to hear it. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show, Mr. Mr. Jack. I love you. you I appreciate you boy. coming through. Before, before I shut it down, before I um, put this up, no, boys. Make- and follow him on that SoundCloud. Like you said before, it's only an exclusive piece dropping by the end of the year on that SoundCloud. So get on that. Give him a follow on that Instagram. Follow you got to get, get those cloud points up. You feel me? And then give him a follow me? on Yo, that give Twitter, me the bro. Followers, bro. Give him a you follow. You give me the 2K Twitter, followers, bro. I might just drop Dark Knight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming through, Mr. Thanks. Jack. Stay safe. Happy uh, holidays. Happy Please not be dad. Happy Quantica, Kwanzaa. Just happy holidays in general, man. Have fun. Stay safe. Peace. Peace. I don't be trusting these bitches at all. I'd rather get money, I give him all. Yeah. I'm praying all of my brothers gon' blow. All of these fake niggas keep tryna call. But I ain't gon' answer the shit. I ain't got time to go stand for the shit. Niggas be hand, but deep down we know that all of you niggas is fans of my Watch shit. Out,